Good afternoon. Can we just say good afternoon? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, better. Let's just say one is too much. One is, one is too much. 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 That's the message. Pass the message. That's the message, and that's why I'm here today, and I'm grateful that you allowed me to be here to be able to talk about the problems that we endure in this country. When we can spend millions of dollars on a daily basis, in places like Libya, all those places like Afghanistan and Iraq and all that, to say that we want to bring peace and we don't have peace here in America. I can understand that because I did walk uh, in the early 60s and I did have to march to, to go to certain places. I couldn't even go to school with other kids. Kids got a right to go where they want to go to school now. But when I grew up, I couldn't go to school. I can remember the days of being in my house and looking out in my yard and seeing cross burn. I witnessed that. It's no different now than it was then. It's the same. What we have to do and what you need to understand, it's about equitable access. It's about equal rights and equal justice for all. We got to preach that. We got to teach that. We got to understand that. When we begin to say, hey, we need to change, you know, I'm so glad Tony is out here. I know Tony for a while, but here's a problem we got in the state of California. If you truly want to make some change, we need to push legislatures about this whole thing, about the threshold, what constitutes a hate crime. That's where we need to start. That's why it's so difficult to get prosecution in this county and in this state about hate crime is because the threshold is so nebulous and it's so crazy and they look for all kind of ways to duck it. If you can remember some months ago that there was a kid that was beating, was beat half to death up in the mountain, mountains and we was doing this hate free San Diego thing. Do you know to this moment until this day there has not been a conviction about that? And it was clearly hate crime. So until we can get our legislators to change that way of thinking and change the laws on the books, then you will be marching for a long, long time because the system does not want to deal with the underlings, as they say, the people who don't have it and not in the, you know, what do they call it, the minority? But I'm trying to figure out what is the minority and what's the majority. We all are the majority. We all, are, we all talk about, you know, we say God, you know. Hey, we all are made and created in the eyes of God. Let's just start there. And he didn't decide when you was born whether you be gay, straight, whatever. You're human being. And that's what he decided. And that's just the way it is. And until people begin to accept that and embrace and embrace that, then nothing is happening. So what I'm, my message here today is, hey, march until you get tired, until your feet bleed. Speak loud. Stand up. Tell the lawmakers to change the law. When we tell the lawmakers to do that and they do that, then you're going to really see a change. There's no way in the world that the law should say that because you want to do a certain thing or you want to be a part of something because you gay and you want to marry the same sex or something, why should that be a law against that? Why? Why? Who are they? Because, here's the key, we vote for them. We vote for them. And as long as we keep voting for those people who are going to push that button that say no, then guess what's not going to ever happen? We have to change that. And when we begin to change that and begin to change the way that we think and change our mind and what we do and how we do, then we begin to change the paradigm shift of life. And when we change the paradigm shift of life, then we don't have to march no more because then we will understand that everybody's equal. I want to thank you.